hello welcome back to my channel I wanted to come on today and do a roundup of all of my summer makes so when I was preparing for this video I was pulling out all of the stuff that I thought I made this summer and it was gonna be way too much so I realized that a lot of that stuff I made in the spring preparing for the summer so we're just gonna do from May through August I also had some fails so we're gonna get into that at the end. And I also made some jewelry. So let's get started. But first, here's what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Kelly shirt dress. It's size four at the top, eight at the bottom. It's in this like a blue and white mini stripe seersucker fabric that I got from, I think Hobby Lobby. It has the chest patch pockets. I also put in hip patch pockets and they kind of overlap the side seams so that when I'm putting my hands in my pocket, it feels more normal. And I also did a hidden button placket for the first time. And then with this make, I also wanted to do just a straight hem with the pattern it has the curved hem. So I wanted to do one with just a straight hem because I've done many of these. All right, let's get into it. My first make is the Simplicity 8878 pattern. And I went with view, I think that's D, but I didn't put in put on the sleeves. So I wanted it to be like high-waisted. So I cut it off where I wanted it to hit and then I just added a gathered skirt. So here it is. I made it in this green or olive green and white stripe rayon. I got this rayon from Hobby Lobby and I just used a piece of scrap fabric for the facing, just some olive green that I had in my stash. And I did bias tape for the armholes and I just added a gather skirt. So I wanted to have this overlap seam like so that the seam is shown on the outside. So I just searched the top of it and attached it. But I wish I would have folded it over and then attached it, if that makes sense. And then maybe added a piece of elastic around the waist. But, I mean, it's fine. It still works. It has a nice chunky hem. And it hits me like right around my knees or right above my knees. And then I had to add pockets. I believe this was a size small. My next mates are York Pinafores. And I cut size 12s in both of these and I used the expansion packet for the pockets. So this expansion packet also has like the wrap back, which I did once, but I didn't do in these. And then it also has like these pocket options, the pocket that goes all the way around the hips and then this chest patch pocket and then it has this patch pocket option also. So I made it in this cotton, green cotton bed sheet that I got from the thrift store. This is like becoming my favorite color, green. And this is like that um, apple green, I love it. So there's the patch pocket. And I used the detail from the sheet because I wanted it to show. It has all of the pockets. The pattern just has this piece for the pocket, but I added an additional layer of pockets. <laughs> I put the sections in, so it has about four sections, yeah, for each layer. So it has a lot of pockets. I get stuff lost all the time. It has so many pockets. And then I did the bias tape, two colors of bias tape. Did bias tape at the hem also. And then I also did this yellow version in this yellow cotton that I got from my mother-in-law. And this is kind of like a medium weight cotton. It actually looks like denim, but here's my yellow version. And I did the chest patch pocket here, and I used the salvage for the pocket here. You can see that. 
And then I just did the kangaroo pocket. And I went with just a one inch hem, basic hem. Next I have some more Kelly shirt dresses. I used some leftover fabric, or actually, I think that might have been the leftover fabric. I was originally gonna make the Bianca jumpsuit and I realized I would get more wear out of a shirt dress in a York pinafore. So that's what I did. So here's my green one. I did the hidden button placket for this one also. All of the buttons are different. I used this little piece of cotton in my from my scraps, just a blue blue and white polka dot cotton. This is size four at the top, eight at the bottom. And I did the patch pockets down at the hips. And I overlapped the, the side seam on these also. I went with the gathers in the back. It does tell you how to do a box pleat for this, for the back. And then for the yoke, it also shows you how to do the burrito method. So the burrito method, I've never, I had never done it before doing the, the Kelly shirt dress. And it's a cute method. It's, it's kind of like magic. It hides all of the, the seams from the yoke. So it's cute, it's nice. But this one, I just went with a basic seam. So I just searched the seam, just attached it and just used one piece for the yoke. This one, also a Kelly shirt dress, but it's a hat. I added a gathered skirt and this is in a white and tan gigum fabric, cotton gigum that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I shouldn't have did the gathers in this one. This one I did do the burrito method for the top. And I did just the gathers. I didn't do the box pleat for the yoke. It looks really nice and clean when you do the burrito method. But I shouldn't have did the gathers in the back because it just makes it look really big. And with that and the gathered skirt, but it's okay. And I add pockets and just a basic hem at the bottom and these little wooden buttons. And I made this one. This one just has a stand collar and I did do the burrito method and the box pleat for this one. This is in a sage rayon fabric, by the way. It's kind of wrinkly, but there's the box pleat. And it has little dimples. I don't know if you can see those, it has raised dimples on it. Rayon is a little tricky to sew with, but you just have to take your time. I wish I wouldn't have put the pockets on. That's the one thing I don't like is this fabric just makes them kind of look really limp. And I did do the curved hem on this one with bias tape. This placket didn't go as great as the other ones. It has some cute buttons though. There's the buttons. And I've gotten a lot better with my placket. I would say I I still have some challenges, but at this one I think it was just my husband was talking to me while I was trying to sew kind of challenge. And I ended up putting, I did the buttonholes first. So there are the buttonholes. They look fine, right? And then I realized I had put them on the wrong side. So I had to put the buttons on the inside. So it kind of looks like a hidden button placket, right? Can't really tell that it was a mistake. But yeah, this fabric just wasn't the best choice. My next makes are the Megan Peasant Dress by Jennifer Paganelli, or Sis Boom. So it's like a baby doll dress. It basically has the arm pieces and then the front and the back pattern piece. And then for the skirt pattern piece, you just cut a rectangle and then curve it up to the hem of the bodice, if that makes sense. I originally made this dress several years ago. I believe I made it a size large. I might've started with a medium, but the medium was too small. It was like hitting my boobs like right here but it was cute. So I went up to a large. It has several cup sizes. So I did the large and the large was actually 
too big, I think. So I ended up going up to a medium, but cutting the larger cup sizes because it has several different cup sizes. It's not A, B, C, but it's just like a cut line, like cut line one, cut line two. So the medium with the second cut line is like perfect. Here's the first one that I made. And this is in a gray with like raised or embroidered polka dots. And I'm not sure where I got this fabric from. I had a small piece. Actually, I think I got this fabric from Phil's Fabric in Portage, Michigan. And it's just a very lightweight cotton. You can actually see through it. So I did the skirt, the straight skirt, and I thought I had taken measurements of my hips, but it was still too small. But when I finished it and I put it on, I was so disappointed because it's like, it's a bit fitted around my hips and I don't, I don't like it that tight. So yeah, I did add pockets to it. And then the way I attached the side seams in the pockets, it was a little bit off on the side seams. So it kind of puckers a little bit on one side. So I didn't like that. So I made another one in this burnt orange. It looks more orangey, bright orange, but it's like a burnt orange. And this is a stretch woven. I love this fabric. And I did a different skirt option. I'm not sure if I still went with the same measurements because I thought, well, it's so stretch woven, so I should be good. It fits, it does fit, but still too fitted for me, for my liking. I didn't put the elastic in the sleeve part. That's how it looks. So cute. So I tried again. This is in a green cotton that I got from Hobby Lobby and it has little white daisies on it with some orange in the middle. So I went with orange thread. And this one is perfect. I actually, for this skirt piece, I used it, I used the pattern Simplicity 1080 because the the, the skirt part of that pattern is like an A line, so that worked out perfectly. And then I added my pockets, and I did bias tape, orange bias tape, for the hem. I also made a little scarf, head scarf with this fabric. And then I made another one out of more leftover fabric. And I don't usually do like pieces like where I'm using multiple pieces of fabric. I mean, I'll use different pieces of fabric for like the collar or like something on the inside, like the inside yoke or whatever. But I've never made a dress like this. I used the same cotton that I used for that Kelly shirt dress, the gathered Kelly shirt dress. And I used just some plain, some leftover um, a green fabric from that bed sheet for the pockets. And I love it. It is so cute. So I can see a lot more of these in my future. I'm planning, I'm already planning some, some of these. So I'm excited about that. And then my next make is the Simplicity 1080 pattern. I made this in a size small. This is a blue, like a denim or chambray blue, double gauze. I love the pocket detail. I just did a bias tape on the pocket. It actually has in the, a pattern piece for, for the pocket, like the top of the pocket, but I, I just did it with a piece of bias tape. It has these little strings on the side Kind of give it a, like a high-waisted look and then it has a tuck on the side it actually i think the pattern tells you to do two tucks but i just do one and then i raised the neckline in the back by a little bit but with this fabric because it's kind of like stretchy it still kind of looks low in the back but super cute perfect summer dress so those are my successful makes for this summer now I want to talk about some fails. The first one is the Fiona dress by Closet Case. It has a note on there that says fail. 
I cut this in a cotton fabric that I had uh, tie dyed and I cut it in a size 14 at the top, 18 at the bottom and it was way too big. So I cut it in a different fabric. It was a yellow cotton fabric that I had um, in my stash and I went with this size 12 at the top, 14 at the bottom. And I thought I still had it, but I must have thrown it out. I sewed the bodice pieces together. It has several different pieces for the bodice. And then I went to attach this border piece and it wasn't matching up. And I tried, in both of, both of the makes, I did try to figure out how to get, the, get this piece to line up and it just wasn't lining up. And also the straps. The straps weren't like going on right either. Like we're looking kind of wonky. So I was just done. I was just over it. I wasn't gonna like, I just gave up. I was just done. I'm done. And then this one, this one it was even more disappointing because I've seen so many lovely makes of this dress and it looks easy. I think everybody has said that it was pretty easy, <laughs> but I struggled with it. It is the Peppermint Wide Strap Maxi Dress. And you can see the drawings. The drawings look pretty easy, right? Here it is. Fairly made up. This is in a cotton that I got from Phil's Fabric. And I tie dyed it. Or it's the, um, I don't wanna butcher the name, but it's the dye, <laughs> tie dye. And that looks pretty. I did it in this red color. It looks really pretty. It has a front seam that, it's, that is French seamed. It also has side French seams. It has these nice little pocket details, which are really cute. Did the pockets. It's clearly not matching up. It has these long slits on the sides and it has straps. So the straps are on. But when I tried, kind of same situation as the Fiona dress, when I went to go attach the facing it would not line up to the seams. So I don't know if my side seams were off, my measurements were off on my side seams or what. I was gonna try and just recut the facing to make it fit, but I just, I just didn't feel like it. I was just like, no, I'm just not doing it. And it looks very big too. I mean, I know you put a piece of elastic in the back to cinch it, but it still seems like it was gonna be way too big. So, that was a fail. Anyway, so those were my two fails. I forgot to mention my biggest project of the summer. I reupholstered a whole couch. A whole couch, yes. It took me about a week, but it was very rewarding and I love the outcome. This was my first time ever reupholstering anything. Now let's get to some of the jewelry that I made. I made several pieces of jewelry like some necklaces and some bracelets and I got back into my jewelry making groove because my cousin reached out to me to make her son a necklace. So I made a necklace for him that had shells and Faux, like a faux leather cording and it turned out really cute it was like a choker necklace so I made that and then that sparked me to make some, some jewelry myself so I made a shell necklace for myself a choker necklace and then I also made this one with these little pieces of wood beading and I did macrame a macrame cording and it has this closure and then I made these bracelets. So I made this, these bracelets with, this one I made with faux leather cord, and I used these hex nuts that you get from the hardware store, and I just put this little knot in the middle. I'm not sure what that knot is called, and then I just added these hex nuts on the sides, on both sides. 
and then around the back I use put these two beads there and then put knots on the ends to keep it from coming a loose and that's how that looks this one I used some gold hex nuts and I did I used this thicker cording to do some macrame around the cords around the hex nuts you can see that and then the attachment I just used the hex nut I didn't really like I was I've been kind of playing around with closures so I didn't really like that closure but it stays on there and then this one I use the same beads as my necklace and this is a smaller cording and I did macrame around the, the beads and I used that closure and then these hex nuts on each side and then here's another one that I made with this black kind of onyx these onyx beads they're just round little um, pieces and I used this macrame cord and did some macrame and I used one to do the closure and I just knotted it at the end so it's been really fun getting back into making jewelry also so that's it for my makes can you guess which one is my favorite make for this summer they're all my favorite makes <laughs> all right thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye